Welcome back to another episode. Thank you for joining us. Last episode we did paint the bottom of Catalpa and she is all ready to go back in the water. So you're probably wondering, well, they must be splashing today. Well, not quite yet. We are ready to go back in the water, but we still have a few things to do. So let's go and get into it. We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode. So this is Fowl Free. So this is to go over your transducer. So we have got ourselves a new transducer. What is it? A 810? Yeah, DST 810. Uh, it's a smart transducer. We're going to be applying our foul free over this. Pretty much all we're going to do is apply the solution over this part here and this part only. I was very tempted to do the paddle wheel, but they do say in here um, not to go over the paddle wheel, especially not to get any around near the pin. It's obviously going to throw the calibration out. So we're pretty good. We're always in the water cleaning thing. So um, I'll do as per instructions clean wipe so we're going to scuff our surface first then we're going to give it a wipe and then we have a conditioner so like a primer that goes on and then we have our solution that goes on and we've got this cute little brush to put it on with i'm just putting it straight in to our sleeve our housing's already in the boat and it is anti-fouled uh, you don't have to do that you could use a, a like a 40 grit sandpaper to clean up around um, whether it's a bronze or plastic fitting you have and then they recommend just using this on the transducer to scuff that and give that a bit of a clean so let's get started so like i said it's pretty straightforward simple little task ppe guys you don't want this stuff in your eyes nor on your hands we have got a nice breeze blowing through here uh, I'm out of my respirators at the moment, otherwise you could wear your respirator if you really want to get down with your PPE. That's what they suggest anyway. Um, I'm going to start with this, but if your housing needs a little bit of a scuff up, and whether it's bronze or plastic, get a bit of 40 grit, go around, tidy that up, but do not run your 40 grit over your transducer. That's what this little green pad's for here. I suppose it's just a gentle little scuff to take the uh, sheen off it. Here we have our initial clean, a little bit of a clean. With all this sort of stuff, cleanliness is your best friend. So this one here, the cleaner, you want to give it a nice wipe and then not let that one dry. So it's still wet, you can see that there. I'm going to remove that while it's still wet. I just wiped our cleaner off with a dry rag. This one I'm going to leave on for 10 minutes and once it's dry it's going to leave a nice little white haze over there and that's going to indicate to us that we're ready for our last step. So there's plenty of solution here and there's plenty of um, product by the look of it. This transducer is a baby. This is our first time using this foul free on our transducer. In the past we've previously just cleaned it by hand and called it done. So we thought we'd try this and we'll let you guys know what we think of it. Obviously we've used their other product which is their prop speed and we do really like that. It's getting a white haze on it. Anyway you can see it here, it's starting to dry. It's 10 minutes for the conditioner to set, go off, go white and which it's done. You can see we've even gone down the side there, which shouldn't be a problem. But you can see it's all got the white haze over there now. It's dried and it is ready for our application of the foul free. And then you can't go too far wrong with this the only thing you don't want to do is get it on your paddle wheel and you definitely don't want it on your paddle wheel pin more so so if you get it on your pin you're probably going to get an inaccurate reading so i've just put a little bit of masking tape down the side go around so I'll run down the side You can see the shiny coating over that whole piece. I'm going to let that dry and uh, we can install that. Kept that little bit of blue tape on there just so I didn't get any over the paddle wheel and definitely not any into the pin. That's it. Foul free. Put this lid back on and call that another task done. Enough flapping my gums. I'll let you get onto the episode. Alright, that horrible bit of rot that was at the back it was a way bigger job than we thought. It's now complete. One out of the road. Hopefully no more to go. <laughs> That's it. That's it. We're done. Put us back in the water now. 
Our room is finally going back together. We've been living in a disaster for weeks. Weeks, honey. Weeks. We've been living in a disaster for months, actually. <laughs> but our room, our room in particular, is a, a, a mess. But good news, it's all fixed and the roof is going on. So this is the before, and we'll show you the after. Made a cushion today. Now I can use the freezer as a seat. Not that it's in very usable condition. It's crap everywhere, but oh, there's the chair. Lee's well, been trying to get, well, not really trying, but he was wondering how to get this floor up and he just worked it out. Sorry, there's a bum crack in the shot. <laughs> but we've never opened this floor. Look at this. That's our fuel tank. Yeah. It's huge. Better. Can have a little look and get some light in there and just inspect it all. Wow. There you go. What are you up to, baby? Well, I just started pulling on this and the top fell off anyway. It's on the outside. They're just rotten. You can see in there. They're our old deck scuppers. The plastic has just deteriorated. It could be 30 years old. Hopefully I've got another inch left in, a couple inches in that pipe I can pull up. Just for now, until we can afford to replace the pipe. So I'm going to try and put this back on. So this is what he's replacing. We have new ones, but we don't have new pipe. I would like Ron ones, but they get quite expensive. So we've replaced these, so... Obviously, we get another 30 years, we'll be right. It's time consuming. It's a two second job, but I've had to pull the pantry apart, I've had to pull the backing out, pull the whole cupboard apart. Whoever pulled it apart prior to me had rounded all the screws, so it made it even more challenging. Anyway, while you've got all of these out. You're on a spice rack. <laughs> and you've got this down here. We might see what we can do. Then I would have a free cupboard because the spices are like taking up half of this cupboard and they're not, it's not very um, practical for space. So I'd like to get some of this stuff that's just sitting here, which is fine while we're here, but when we're sailing, it'd be better in a cupboard. Everything's got a uh, dry land spot. Yeah, we got to make this boat so she floats again. Remember that she moves. <laughs> they were there when we were sailing, but. We could do better. We're in the anyway. Cortez. As soon as we get out of the Cortez, Where I'll start would a spice rack go? Where would it go? So we'll see if he's got time today. Today we are replacing all of our drains on our deck. There is like four on the deck and then there's four in the cockpit. So they're water drains. You can see they are toast. Look at all those cracks on the inside there. Not only that, you can see where it was all bleeding around here and these that had water on them and they'd actually let go so if you've got any clips that look like that chances are they're just going to go pop like that and hopefully they're above waterline otherwise you're going to be in trouble obviously these ones guys you know i don't like these these are to me rubbish we know honey we know yep rubbish rubbish <laughs> I've seen them fail too many times. Just got to get those pressed ones. Some of them are broken and old. These ones are inside here, so they haven't been in the sun, so they're not really that bad. But the ones on the outside, Lee was like popping it out from the inside and I was sitting up on the deck and one exploded in my face and like bits went flying. Thank God I didn't lose an eyeball. Be careful if you're changing your tank drains and they're plastic, they could uh, explode. So they're broken, so they're very much in need of replacing. So these are the new ones. This is what we're flying. It was like the top part of this. It just like exploded and went flying everywhere. But we have a new one, so. The last one is going in. I was just wiping all the goop off. And we got one to go. Another job out of the way. We serviced the propeller, then we've put on our prop speed, and now we're about to fill it with some grease. There's little grub screws on the side here. This is a max prop, everyone's prop's different. Remove the uh, grub screw and put in a little nipple. So the idea of this is that you can actually do this in the water also. So say you didn't actually get to haul out at the end of the year or the season or whatever it is, or your unit starts to make a bit of noise, 
you can pump this underwater, hence why the grease gun looks like this on the tube. You can just take this underneath with you and uh, pump her up in the water. This is a calcium type grease I'm using here. That's what we're doing. We'll fill this up and then we can call this done. Ready to splash. Ready to splash, got the new anodes on. It is pretty sad looking. The prop speed actually turned out pretty good. There's no runs, there was no runs around the leading edges. Um, all these seem to fill in fairly well, but we'll see how it goes with growth. The prop is really badly pitted, but it actually feels not too bad, like pretty smooth. It's gonna take a lot of this. So when we actually hauled out here, it was in uh, June, was it June? End of July. End of July. Mm, pretty much all of it. So when we hauled out, it was the end of July and I walked around the yard and I noticed everyone's props were actually leaking out oil from in here that had like a similar prop or max prop. So when we serviced this, I deliberately didn't grease it up straight away because um, I didn't want all the oil running out, all the grease coming out and then having to try and put prop speed over it. So I left that till last. So that's what I'm doing now, filling it up with, filling it up with grease. And she's ready to roll. Oh wow. That's just like, that's a little bit of grease just makes that difference. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Pour it out the back here. So it hasn't come out the back hole yet either. That's another section that's got to be greased. I can see it coming out all around here. So if I had have actually greased this up before we put the prop speed on, after we serviced the prop, we would have had that. And I didn't want all that grease coming out and then have to try and clean it and put prop speed on. So we did all that before we, oh wow. All right, there we go. It's coming out. Got it coming out the back here with the back one. And now we've got it coming out the other hole also. And it's coming out around all the, around where all the props fix in there. So, oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Different prop. Oh, that's running so smoothly now. Ah. Oh. It's a dream. <laughs> Let's work all that in. A couple of extra pumps. Remember the prop we had on that one? Okay, put one grub screw back in. Okay, that's tight. That's tight. Job done. Let's keep my nipple. I always like to have my nipple close by. Sorry. Sorry. I'm gonna get this suit back on. I just got one more little touch up of our where our stands were. We'll call it done. Props ready. Bottom's all done apart from the centerboard, which we'll do on the day before we leave. Anyway, thanks for tuning in guys. Uh, till next time. Like always, we appreciate your support and uh, we'll see you on the next one. All right, he's got his happy suit back on and that's not poo. He did not poo himself, ladies and gentlemen. That is just some dirt. <laughs> Give the captain a break. He's not that old yet where he's crapping his pants. <laughs> Give us a little mix up because been sitting there for a bit and key with anti-fouling is to constantly keep your anti-foul mixing because all your goodies settle down to the bottom. Um, so pretty much every time we go back to the can, we just mix the can every time. It takes an extra 10 seconds, but it stops the whole lot settling down to the bottom and ending up with just a nicely coloured paint on the bottom of your boat and no goodies inside of it. All right, well, I thought this episode was finished. Seems to be continuing on. All right, guys, we're going to leave it here. We'll just finish with a, a lovely shot of the captain rolling on this beautiful Annie Fowl. Lovely total boat bottom paint. Looks better than the top side. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom really does. The bottom has had a lot more attention <laughs> than any any part of the boat. But it's important that it has, so she's ready to go in the water. And uh, yeah, like Lee said, thanks for watching. That's it. So if you're still sitting there, thanks for hanging in there right till the end.
and we'll see you next time. Bye.